Okay guys, so in this video, let's see that how do we load balance using Nginx because as we can see that we have two instances running of our Node.js application, one on port 4000 and one on port 4001. So we'll be balancing the load between these two instances of our Node.js application using Nginx as the load balancer also. And then later on in the video, we'll be also seeing that is that is how do we compress our responses from Nginx that is using gzip as the compression module. And finally, we'll see that how do we disable the Nginx uh, uh, version we are using that is uh, currently visible to the client but uh, we'll be disabling that nginx version so that the client should not know that which nginx version we are using and it is only for security purposes so now let's see that how do we load balance the applications using nginx so firstly let me simply switch the sudo user here that is sudo su to switch to root user here and now let me clear out and now i'll go inside this folder that is hc nginx and then inside the conf.d directory where our in nightall.fun.conf file resides uh, if i do ls here we have this nightall.fun.conf and currently we see that oh, we have this application running on port 4001 as well as we have uh, oh, we have this application running on port 4000 also though later on in the series you won't be able to access the applications directly on these port numbers but still we see that we have these applications on port 4000 and 4001 so let's load balance them so let's go back here and here what i'll do i'll simply open the configuration file in vim so vim uh, night owl dot fun and here what you need to do just above the server block we need to write one more block and that is the upstream block so let's press i go inside the insert mode and here i'll decide uh, define one block called upstream so i'll say up not upstream but upstream simply like this and then let me also close the curly braces here so that the braces are closed and now inside this upstream block we'll define the two instances or the two servers that are running our node.js application so first server would be localhost port 4000 because that is the server which is running our first instance and then we'll define another block that is server here or another server here not the block here and that server is running on port 4001 that is for, uh, that is localhost port 4001 and now we need to give this upstream a name so let's give this upstream a name and let me call it night owl so this can be any name whatever you want to have it here i'm simply calling it night owl and now what we need to do we need to go to this proxy pass here that is defined now inside the HTTPS server block which was generated by certbot and instead of this proxy pass uh, which is proxy passing our application to this instance running on port 4000 we'll simply proxy pass uh, to this upstream here so once i'll do it it would make more sense to you that is how easy it is to do so let me escape from the insert mode and let's come to this proxy pass and instead of writing here localhost port 4000 what i'll do i'll simply give this a name that is the upstream name and i'll call it night owl so let's uh, go to the insert mode and delete this localhost port 4000 and now let me simply go to night owl simply like this and you don't have to do anything else like the like uh, .com or .fun or nothing like that it is simply pointing this proxy pass to this upstream block here so now what i'll do i'll simply simply press escape and colon write and quit so that that is all what you need to do to load balance the application running on two instances so now i'll simply writing and quitting this file and now what i'll do i'll simply check my configuration by doing nginx hyphen t so all seems to be successful so what i'll do i'll simply reload the application that is the nginx application so system ctl uh, reload nginx and the application has been reloaded or nginx has been reloaded so now let's try to reload the page and if everything worked then this might be port 4000 or it might be 4001 so it depends on which way nginx decides to go that is whether uh, nginx wants to serve the uh, a response from 4000 or from 4001 so let's reload the page so we see that here that we get 4000 so let's reload we are still getting 4000 so let's open another tab and let's go to night all dot fun and we see that this time oh, we are getting a response from 4000 but but now we again get back a response from 4000 so now let's so now let me open another browser here so it might be that we might get a response from 4001 as well so 
So we see that we get a response back from 4001. So we see that our load balancing is working. And now one thing more I would like to tell you about WebSockets is this that if you are using WebSockets inside your application, then you need to do a couple of changes here. So let's go uh, open our nightall.fun.com file here. And now whenever you are using WebSockets, what you need to do, you might be having a location path for WebSockets. And I'm just writing it here and later on I'll be simply commenting that out. So let me control C that is this location block and let me go to the insert mode once again and let me paste in the same location block and you might be having a path for web sockets that might be like socket.io if you are using socket.io for web sockets then you will be simply proxy passing the response not to this night all thing but instead you should be proxy passing it to this thing here that is let me control c and let me go here and let me paste it here and it is only if you were using web sockets here then you need to do this and then you need to do one more thing here that is you need to provide in some http headers so let's let me copy it from my repo and let me paste it here and let me paste it here so you need to provide these two or uh, this HT, uh, this http version that is 1.1 because i guess that websockets one work on uh, HTTP 1.1 so you need to provide in the HTTP version also and then you need to provide in these two headers headers that is the upgrade header and the connection header and now the last thing which you need to do is to go to the upstream block here and now here what you need to do you need to provide in one more line here and that is called that is that is IP underscore hash so that whenever a request comes from a particular IP that IP should only be served from only one of these instances whenever the WebSocket connection is in progress. So that it should not be the case that uh, uh, the first time WebSocket tries to handshake, it goes to this uh, instance and the second time it goes to this instance. So this IP hash means that whatever the client's IP address, so whatever host is assigned or whatever instance is assigned, only that instance would be responsible for handling client connections from that IP address. So now let me simply press escape and now let me simply write and quit because it doesn't matter because we do not have a socket.io file or we do not have us uh, we are not making any socket connection here using web sockets so it doesn't matter here and even if i do nginx t everything should work well so but beware that you should only use this bit of code only when you are using web sockets and now let's see one more thing that is how to enable gzip module inside nginx that is to compress our responses so for that let me open the file again that is the configuration file so now to enable gzip compression what you need to do you need to simply go to this server block here that is the https server block and here what you need to do let me go at the very top of the server block and just below this line here that is after the server name is defined we need to set uh, go inside the insert mode and we need to set gzip to be on so we'll say gzip to be on like this and then oh, we can define some uh, uh, some more uh, variables about gzip so let me copy and let me paste it here and then i'll explain it to you and these all uh, things you'll find in my repo again so let me paste it here first so here we pasted a lot of things firstly we enabled gzip and then the minimum length of the gzip should be 256 bytes and then uh, the things which you need to know is the compression level so it is 6 and uh, what I've searched on the internet that 6 is a pretty good compression level and then for the HTTP version it is 1.1 and the type of responses uh, sh that should be compressed are these types of responses that is the text XML should be compressed, application XML should be compressed and then oh, we have this uh, application JSON should be compressed as we can see here and then we should disable gzip on internet explorer that is from version 1 to version 6 that is msi does not support gzip so we need to disable it on these versions here so you can simply copy and paste this bit of code and it is pretty much the same for any server so this is how we enable gzip here so simply let's simply press escape write and quit and now let's check our nginx configuration once again and we see that the text is successful so let's uh, reload the nginx file here that is the nginx uh, server here so it has been reloaded and now the last thing which i wanted to show you in this video is this that if i reload the page uh, let me right click here that is to inspect this page and let's go to the network tab here 
And now let me force reload the page once again. And now if I go to this document here that is nightall.fun, we see a response header here that says the server is nginx and its version is 1.14.1. So you should never want to uh, like reveal your Nginx version uh, running on your server. You should disable this 1.14.1, but instead it should only be shown here that a server is Nginx and you do not need to show this uh, version of the Nginx server. So how to disable this Nginx version? So let's go back to our application and let me again open that file. Or this time what I'll do, I'll simply open the nginx conf file here because it is a global setting though we can provide it in our own file but uh, let me provide it globally here. So let me do ls here. So let's cd dot dot and now let's do ls here and now what I'll do, I'll simply open this file that is vim nginx dot conf and now here what I'll do, I'll go inside the http block here that is this http block. So this is the whole actual nginx dot conf file. And now inside the uh, inside this HTTP block, what I'll do, I'll go inside the insert mode and I'll write something here. So let me go inside the insert mode and let's write here that is server tokens to be off. That is server tokens, uh, not like this. It should be like this. That is off. So it should be like this. That is server tokens are off. And now let me simply write and quit this file. And now let me do nginx t the uh, test is successful. So now let me reload the page here that is systemctl reload nginx. It re reloaded and now let's go back to our application here. So let's go back to our application and let's try to force reload the page. And now we have this nightall.fun file and now if we scroll down we see that now we only see that nginx is serving this application but we do not have any version number here that is what version of nginx we are using so this is also what you can do inside your production application that is not to reveal the nginx version so this is it and later on in the video we'll be also disabling this x powered by express because we do not want the clients to know that or are we running Node.js or are we, are we using Django or are we using Flask? So this should be disabled so that the client does not know that is what backend we are using. So we would be disabling this as well later on in the series. So guys, that's all about this video. So see you in the next one.